Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Stripe for getting online payments from your Bubble app. And basically, there are a couple of different ways. You can do uh, subscription uh, payments where uh, one of your users pays you on a monthly basis or they pay you uh, an annual subscription, um, or they can do one-time uh, payments. And in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to do the, the one-time payments. Uh, one thing you're you know, going to need to do is to go in and create a Stripe account and get some keys um, so that you can go and put them into your, your Bubble app. And basically, let's go over to Bubble here. Um, what you'll need to do is do a search um, for plugin and Stripe. And the plugin that I'm going to be showing you is the Stripe.js here. So it's a free plugin. You'll want to go and install that. I've already got it in, installed. Um, when you get your um, keys, um, Basically, what you're going to want to do is this is this is going to be your um, plugin uh, page in your uh, in your app, and you'll see there's a couple of places to put the keys. Um, so there's production keys. Uh, so when you're actually uh, live with your app, you're going to want to put your keys there, and then they also have development keys um, that you would put into to here. One thing to keep in mind that for the authorization. Um, you need to have the bearer um, in, put in there before your uh, key. So it's bearer, space, and then the key. Uh, the production keys are different than the development keys, and this allows you to go and do transactions in your dev environment uh, without actually having actual transactions occur. And then when you get uh, your app to be live, then you'll use your, your production keys here. Um, you'll need to have your bank account and everything set up for, for those. But for the development environment, you don't need to have the, uh, your bank account and, and so forth set up. So it's nice that Stripe does this for you. So then you can do a tremendous amount of testing in the dev environment uh, before you go over to the live uh, production environment. Okay, so once you get your plugin all set up, uh, what I did here was I just created um, a simple little form and um, basically we've got the payment amount here uh, set up as currency, uh, the email address and um, you'll need that because um, for setting up a transaction with Stripe you're going to need the user's uh, email address, yeah, the credit card and uh, the credit card name, uh, name on the credit card rather, and then the credit card number. On the uh, credit card number uh, in the development environment, the number you'll be using is uh, 4242, uh, 4, 2, 4, 2, and that's repeated um, eight times, so a total of 16 characters or numbers, and I'll, uh, I'll, walk, that, I'll walk through that in a demo shortly. Uh, the month and year expiration, and then the CVC code. Um, some cards are three digits, some are four digit. Uh, so one of the things uh, you'll want to do here is have a maximum number. And put this as uh, text numbers only. So there is an option for integer um, or text. You want to have t uh, text numbers only so that it'll work with the, uh, the plugin. Um, so that's, that's important to know. Uh, one other thing is for the month and the year, uh, I suggest putting in the choices here in a drop down. And then similarly for the years, and I would add quite a few years, I think I went to 2030. The reason being is you don't want people uh, typing in one, two, three, or whatever in case they you know, mess it up, fat finger it, what have you. And the same with the dates. Um, you want to kind of lead your users to put in the right values. So then that way you don't have, when they go and confirm a payment, that they don't have any uh, issues uh, with, the, with the transaction. Uh, so those are basically the input uh, fields that are needed for the transaction. 
The other thing you'll notice on here is Stripe JS, the Stripe token B. And basically, right here. So I'm just going to put one down. And you'll see here, element is visible on page load. This needs to be checked. Now, in fact, when you go and run uh, your app, this will not be visible on the screen at all. But it is needed um, so that the, uh, the plugin, the workflow is going to work uh, correctly. So make sure that you do add uh, the Stripe token. Okay, now confirm payment, and this is just a simple workflow. What I've done here is I just have um, display data. I have a pop-up confirm payment, and I just um, send the data from the group and then show a pop-up for that. And let's just get to it. And here, here it is, basically. All I do is I, I show, let me see, it might be easier in the text editor. I just put the amount, their email address, the name on the credit card, the credit card number, expiration date, the CVC, um, so that they can go and review it. And then they hit confirm. And basically when they hit confirm, first thing I do is I set this custom state here. And what this does is it prevents double clicking. So if a user hits this rapidly, I basically disable that so they can only click it once. So the default value when the page uh, logs uh, or, or loads, it's no. And then as soon as I hit the, cl the uh, click confirm button, it turns it to yes. And when it's yes, I'm just going to bounce back over here to this conditional. When it's yes, it'll say that it's confirming and that it is not clickable. And when it's no, it is clickable. So again, this custom state, all it does is it prevents double clicking. Now, this step is important here, and this is uh, one of the, the commands um, for, for using Stripe. So it's basically, um, let's see, plugins. Now, there's a, there's a lot of Stripe options here. And basically, for this one, what you want is you want the Stripe JS platform and where is it? Create a customer. It's uh, somewhere on here. Let's see again. This this is a there we go. Create a customer. So this is the one you want to use here. Again, you'll see there is a lot of choices here. So make sure you choose the platform. Create a create a customer. And I want to say. Okay, they're all platform. Okay, you got seller ones now and so forth. Again, with this plugin, there's a lot of different things that you can do um, with this Stripe JS plugin. So create a customer. And what you want to do is have their email address. And this is important. Again, Stripe is looking for an email address so that they can go and create the um, account um, the customer account, your user account uh, within Stripe. And then the description, this is just basically the description that you want to give. Uh, so when you go to your dashboard in, in Stripe, you will see uh, Echo Lake Technologies for me, client. Uh, it'll be whatever you want to want to put in there. One thing I will note is that um, for this, the way I have this set up, there is no login here. There's no user account. Um, if you have uh, for your, your app, I assume there'll be a user account. And basically what you want to do is instead of having this create a customer, you're actually not going to have that in this, work, in, in this workflow here. You'll have already created a customer somewhere else um, in, your, in your app. And so you don't want to do it again here because then you're going to get customers um, showing up, the same customer showing up in your dashboard over and over and again. In a, uh, Stripe, from Stripe's perspective, it'll look like a new customer. So that's just something to, to be aware of. Um, but since I don't have a login for my users, I create a new user uh, in Stripe every, every time. Okay, the next thing we want to do is convert the card to a Stripe token. And basically how we do that is we come over to Element Actions and then we convert card into a Stripe token. So this is what we'll use. So we're not going to actually be using any of these plugin ones here, but we'll be doing the Element Action to convert card to a Stripe token. Okay, and then here basically the element we want. So that was the 
stripe token here, which is stripe token B. So we want to choose that one. It's the only one on this page. Um, and then basically your inputs, the credit card uh, number, the month and the year, the CVC number, and so forth. The other thing that we want to put on here um, is you're going to need to have the uh, country code. So for me, it's the US and currency code is uh, US dollars. Um, so depending on what country you're in, um, check with Stripe to see what, uh, what value you want to be putting in here. Uh, the other thing is this can be dynamic here. So if um, you do have uh, users from various countries, you can, as part of their profile, you can have them input their country uh, information and then you can go and dynamically um, add it to the transaction here. And then after I just hide the pop-up, and then for the uh, custom state, I set it back to no, so that button is, um, can be clicked. Now, I'm gonna stay over in the workflow here because when this workflow processes, and particularly when this convert card Stripe to token B occurs, what's gonna happen is you'll see these two um, down here. So, so basically, um, when uh, elements when a Stripe uh, token is created, um, when a bank account's been created or ID and so forth. Um, what you want to do is you want to have a workflow when st uh, Stripe token uh, B has been created. Um, you want to um, have this in there so that the actual charge occurs. And then basically you have the dollar amount. Um, one thing to note is that you need to put a multiplier. Um, Stripe has things in, in pennies, um, so you wanna, if you put in uh, 100 um, into your input and you did not have this 100 here, it would show up as a $1 transaction. So put a 100 in there um, to take care of that. Uh, again, US dollars, that can be dynamic. And basically these here, um, whatever you wanna put in for the description, uh, this will show up on the invoice uh, for your, your customer. Um, and capture now true, so set this as true. I think the default comes up as empty. You wanna make sure that this is true um, so that it will go and um, uh, do the transaction uh, immediately. So this is an important thing. I think I got hung up uh, early on with using Stripe that this was empty and, and my transactions weren't going through. And then basically Stripe token B's card token. And there's some different options on here. What you wanna pick is card token. And then basically, um, let's see, is it this work? Where's the workflow? Um, okay. Okay, when this convert card Stripe token B, so when this Stripe token gets um, created and, and so forth, you want to use this uh, card token. So this is important as well. So this Stripe token, uh, card token. And then basically I just have another pop-up that says that uh, it's been verified and um, or send the data and then uh, then show that the, it's been verified, just to, to give the user some awareness that the uh, transaction is complete. Um, and that's basically it. Um, cancel, as you'd expect, it's just to cancel um, the window here, close out the window. Now let's go and do a demo. So for this one here, let's say it's $100, and then, um, make up a user test.com and the name Joe test and then what I was saying earlier so you want to make sure that this is set up um, as 4.2 in the test environment this is what you want to use uh, for testing a credit card and then just uh, expiration date and then make up a CVC number confirm payment and then you see that this immediately comes up has the information, $100, information, um, and confirm. And then if I keep clicking this, uh, nothing happens. So it's, it does a conf confirmation. And what's happening is that it's actually now gone to my account. 
and has said that the $100 uh, has, been, has been charged. So if I were to go in my account right now, I, I could see that there was a $100 charge by this um, uh, user, Joe. Um, and let's, let's do a quick demo here. Let's do, I'll just make up a number and we'll do it with Joe again. Um, Joe test and two, oops, four, two, four, two, and this now this should give me an error. Let's see if this does. So it says confirm even though it's, so what's gonna happen here is, yeah, it's not letting me confirm. So what I gotta do here, yeah, see how, one, two, I'll just pick one, two, three. And now when I do this, it's confirming it. Issue with credit card. Please check info and submit again. Perfect. So it's working as expected. So uh, basically, it's October 2018 as I do this recording. And basically, um, you know, February has already happened. So now if I change it to November, confirm, then this should go and work fine. And it's processing. That looks good so far. And the payment there. And that's it. So this is how you, you set up uh, Stripe uh, for one-time payments um, in your Bubble app using the Stripe JS plugin. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave me a uh, comment below. Or if you like it, certainly give me a thumbs up. And uh, that's it for this video. And um, I will see you in the next one. Thanks.